If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership too. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Hot Stocks podcast, where members from the Stock Pickers Academy share their top picks. So my name is Debida Nosakita and I'm the founder of the Stock Pickers Academy. I also go by the name My Like Debs on social media, Instagram, Twitter, at parties and even on the football pitch. A little bit of background about myself is I grew up on the streets of Peckham. I went through school one year early and eventually earned a scholarship to study six A-levels at the City of London School. I then went to the University of Warwick to study mathematics. I was able to then land a trading role at Goldman Sachs, trading equity derivatives, equity swaps, interest rate products and market making to hedge funds. I then moved to a Jewish family office where I traded commodities like oil, like gold and interest rate futures. I moved to Barclays where I'd previously done a summer internship to to trade interest rate products again as well as some corporate bonds before making a move to a quantitative hedge fund in the Channel Islands where we pretty much traded everything that moves. Orange juice futures, cotton, sugar, stocks from all around the world, currencies and fixed income. As some of you know, the WhatsApp group was created as a way for me to initially take a bit of the load off myself because I used to get inundated with a lot of messages asking for my views on markets and stocks. So uh, what I decided to do was to cherry pick specific people in my investment network that I've built over the past 11 years and put them in a group full of strangers. It was a little bit of a social experiment to begin with, but it eventually worked out. So initially the group was mainly investment professionals and then it turned into maybe 50-50 with beginners as people started inviting their friends. And it was fascinating to see because I tried to set pace with, you know, sharing my transactions and my ideas and what I was doing. And eventually that caught on. A few others did the same. And before you knew it, the group had hit the WhatsApp limit of 257 members. And then there was a waiting list and that was a bit difficult to manage initially. I believe in the power of groupthink. I mean, since I started the group, my personal stocks watch list has grown from maybe 25 stocks to having now 200. And that's because I just started adding the contributions for the from the group and I collated all the ideas and I put some very conservative target entry prices on quite a number of names. And it was it made it possible for me to actually have more of a selection of high conviction ideas. And the group was the group has been great. There are people who've made hundred percent returns, sixty percent returns, two hundred percent returns on different stocks for from ideas generated within the group. And then as the group waiting list started to grow, I decided to start a telegram and an Instagram. And the telegram actually has more people than the Insta uh, than the WhatsApp group. So that was quite interesting. The watch list is uh, is actually was it was created in Google Sheets, which live updates, so everyone can actually have access with a touch of a button to it, and that was something quite interesting as well. So today we're going to be talking about some of the hottest stocks on the watch list with a specific focus on the pandemic and COVID nineteen coronavirus. <laughs> Now I'm going to introduce everyone 
else as they come into the room. We've got Joy, we've got Loza, Lorraine, and we've got Benga, also known as Brother's Keeper. You are now listening to the Hot Stocks podcast. I'm going to pass on to Lorraine now. She's going to introduce herself and tell us a little bit about her investing. Hello, hello. Yes, hi. Um, I'm Lorraine, also known as Loza in the group. Um, I'm a lawyer by trade and just do some stock investing on the side, um, just as a hobby. Um, I've been doing that for about seven to eight years now, and um, it certainly has been a revelation. Um, we're not going to dwell in the early years, but it was more error than trial and error, but you do learn from the mistakes and you, you grow from there. It's already been invaluable in terms of my um, growth as an investor and also uh, just awareness of the different types of stocks out there, the different ways in people um, invest their thinking, uh, the group think around certain stocks and my research as well, because even if you don't um, go into a certain stock that's um, mentioned in the group, you can certainly do some research around a certain type of stock or industry um, that that I personally wouldn't have been wouldn't have been on my radar or exposed to um, and build and grow from there. So um, it's it's fantastic. Glad that a podcast has been started because that's just another way to get the information out there and another way for people to digest it. My name is Benga. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I am an engineer by trade. I work as a project manager in research organization. So we basically, we measure gases. So any gas at all. I think a lot of things people do not take notes about, you know, you open your Coca-Cola, whatever gas that preserves it, from medical gases to industrial gases, or, you know, processing gases. And uh, a lot of uh, the products that we use, that we, sorry, that we manufacture or we research on is used in, in the vaccine. So right now in this pandemic, we are actually supporting on the front line. Um, I have actually been investing actively. I've been doing this, you know, a little bit on and off for about 10 years, but I did really get involved heavily. Uh, I think I took it more serious, sorry, about five years ago. And um, I think I was on Instagram one day and then I saw this guy, man like Debs, and I thought, oh, who is this guy? What are these guys? Okay. How dare you? You know, this is meant for white people. And then, you know, I took more interest in this page. And then I saw the link, you know, he's always having a party. And I went to his pay, you know, his, <laughs> the other link I saw, Stop Pieces Association. I thought, what a, you know, what a bold name, Association, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're making it official. But, and also, you know, over that time, I tend to do a lot of reading anyway. I've been reading about, you know, uh, there's, there's a book I read called uh, Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun? You know, it's an inspiring story of uh, Reginald Lewis, who's the, the richest black man in American history. And, you know, he he did talk about, you know, if you, you know, how about why he wants to be, the, you know, the richest black man in America. You know, he came from very humble backgrounds and all that. And I thought, OK, you know, what's the best way for me to do this? Of course, you need to diversify your income, get involved. And when I started doing this, I thought I want to get as many black people as much as, as I can into investing. Like I said, I'm quite a purist, very much a, you know, when it comes a value investor. But when I joined Stock Pickers Association, I saw what was on there. Initially, you know, I was actually taken aback. I didn't really want to comment at all. I thought, let me just see what these guys are doing, these pretenders. But all of a sudden, it's actually been invaluable to me. I've been able to, you know, take a few picks from there and, uh, you know, been applied to, to what I do as well. So, yeah, that's me. <laughs> um... okay. I'm just laughing because Ben goes through quite a lot of shade in that introduction. No, it's calm. It's fine. It's fine, you know. Yeah, it's... Gotta take it sometimes. <laughs> I see you, Benga. <laughs> um, yeah, hi everyone. I'm Joy and uh, I'm currently a quantitative analyst. So I've been working at hedge funds for the past few years. I've had previous roles in equity research. And now my current role, um, I'm in a multi-asset team and I work on trying to predict returns 
um, for equities, fixed income, um, some like mortgage backed securities. So quite a mix of um, assets and also work on optimizing portfolios. And so um, to kick off, um, I think today Deb said we we're going to talk about Corona stocks. And when I think about this whole Corona period, I kind of like to bucket Corona stocks into like a few categories because there's different ways to benefit from this environment at the moment. So the four main buckets I would put them into is healthcare. So within healthcare, we have companies like Gilead, which some of you may have heard of. They became popular after developing a drug for Ebola. They're up like 24% this year. Um, I think we've got like Moderna and a few others that we'll discuss later. And the second category I'll say is like working from home stocks. So this is where you'd have Zoom. Zoom is up 156% this year. Um, Citrix, wow. it's crazy, right? Um, Citrix is up 33% this year. And um, Slack as well. So that's what I'll call working from home mm. stocks. And then the third category would be like self-quarantine. So this is where we have the Netflix, Activision. They're up 36%, 32%. And um, Peloton, Peloton's also been popular, which we'll still will discuss. And the fourth Corona category is consumer goods. So this is where you have Amazon, Alibaba, Johnson and Johnson, your supermarkets. So I think today we're probably going to discuss the first three, which is healthcare, working from home, and quarantine stocks. And just to add some context as well. So when I say things have been um, up year to date, we have to remember that there was a really large sell off around March 12th. So when we're discussing today and you're hearing returns of like over 100 percent for some of these stocks, the timing, the timing of the investment also plays a factor into how much you could have earned. So you could have earned a lot more than these numbers. Um, so, yeah, Very true. I'm going to pass to Lorraine. I think she's she's had some good experience in healthcare this year. So. You can say that again. <laughs> so calm down. <laughs> well, well, we've, uh, had a mixed, let's, we've had a mixed experience. Um, he's been humble. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> no, but, um, but seriously, I mean, so Novoside is one of those ones that, that, was, that came up in the group quite a lot. And to be honest, it, it is in the group that I found out about Nova, Nova, Novoside or Novoside, however you want to pronounce it. Um, and I don't know that it's one that I would have come across myself just doing my own research. Um, but it was mentioned in the group and I, I carried along my business. I was like, yeah, I don't know much about it. I'll leave it. I think it was trading at about 25p a share at the time. And I think, Debs, earlier you said um, it had ranged in the year from about 4p a share to 500 Five pounds, yeah. To five pound, yeah, to five yeah. pounds. And it's currently down at about I say down, but it's down it's about um three pounds ten now, I think. Three pounds ten now. So I mean just just in that, just in that, yet we have a range of what, four four to six P a share and now currently it's at three pound on a share. So you can already tell where this story is going <laughs> essentially. But so yeah, I heard about it in the group, I was trading about twenty five. I was like, eh, I'm not sure about it. But the more people started talking about it, the more I started piquing my interest. So you know what? I thought, you know what? Let's go in. Let's 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 dip a little toe in. So <laughs> went in about 50p and I thought I'd done good. And then it dropped again. It was it's a highly volatile share. Mm. But um just <laughs> right. That's a, nice <laughs> like a, lot these, a lot of these healthcare companies just have mad swings up and down. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm on that roller coaster. I I, I get in a couple hundred because I was like, you know what, let's 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 not lose everything. Um, <laughs> and uh, this thing takes me on a little roller coaster, and it gets to about one fifty. It gets to fifty first, and I'm normally a one hundred percent um returner if I can. If it gets to a hundred, I always try and take out my original investment, so then I'm not my capital is not risk anymore. It's just the profit. Um. But you know, you know that that little thing called greed. Sometimes it sits on your shoulder a little bit, so um, it gets to about a hundred. And I do, I take out some of my original investment, but not all of it, because this thing continues to rise. It gets to by the time it gets to one fifty, that's where my even greed can't stop me. I'm taking everything out. <laughs> <laughs> so I took every 
everything out. I was like, okay, I, I cashed out. I sold my profit. I sold my original investment. I took out my profit. I was like, you know what? I've won. I beat the market. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> In a very short time as well. <laughs> and, yeah. and like, just to, just to prove my point, it started dropping after that. And I was like, I was, you guys don't understand. I was feeling like a beast. I was feeling, what's that guy's name? Is it Gecko? From all the, the film, I was feeling yeah. like that. Right? I was like, yes. Not, not only for this stock to then just skyrocket from there, it gets to three pounds a share, four pounds a share, five pounds a share, and the girl is sitting on the sideline. Like, what did you do? Like, genuinely, what did you do? Um, <laughs> hey, some some of us didn't get in at all. We just watched the whole show. Honestly. We just watched the whole movie. Honestly. <laughs> So um, it was one of those because because as we said, it is highly volatile. So when it dipped, I think I think it dipped down below um about three pounds a share a few weeks ago. I decided to dip my toe back in um to see if it will reach those heady heights of five pound a share again. Don't and it's a uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly at least at least get a fifty percent win out of it, you know. But um, so yeah, I dipped back in about um just under three pound a share, and uh, it's uh. It's it, it went up. It went up to about four and a half, but it's down again. The, the, the stock markets were a bit um, lackluster this week, uh, but I'm, I'm keeping it for the time being. And I mean, so, um, apologies for those who don't know, Novaside is one of the testing um, their testing company. And others correct me if I'm if I'm wrong, but I believe they're 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 testing for coronavirus and they test a bit. C Y C, isn't he? Yes, that's the ticker N C Y C um Y T rather. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so obviously there, it's it's all the rage right now in terms of Corona um, and and testing and everybody trying to test um, from governments to individual companies as well um, if they want people to keep working. So um, it's understandable that that stock has been quite volatile. Mm. Um, so yeah, it it's it, it, it's one that had you caught it um, early on, you, and and had you not cashed out as well, you could be it were as as devs likes to call it a ten bagger. <laughs> <laughs> Oh you know, there's another um, virus testing company that I've been trading in and out of, Co-Diagnostics. So this one I've not um, heard the group talk about a lot, but it's up 1,800% um, this year so far. So it starts... Is this one of the ones that you told us to add to the watch list? Yes, I am. Um... Sorry. Forgot, forgot to tell us to add to the watch list. I told you. I told you, you, you money in spirit. <laughs> I told you in spirit. Um, <laughs> no. in spirit. I, I, wow. I want to share it now because um, it, especially okay. for day traders, it can be very exciting. It's a stock that goes up um, and swings up and down at 18%. Like yesterday it was down 22%. The day before that was yeah, up 30, 30%. Yeah, so um, yeah, it can cause stress, but it can also cause a lot of happiness if you know what you're doing mm -hmm. so they um of the u.s they're made primarily to work on the virus testing and they've been getting mixed news this week so far which is why the the return swing so wildly but they started at that one dollar mark and right now they sit at 17 but this week they went as high as 28 dollars so that's Ooh, wow. wow. Yeah, that's why the rest of millions wow. are made. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for thanks for the heads up. I'm heading you up now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the ticker is one. CODX, co-diagnostics. It's one of the favorite ones they trade. So yeah, no, yeah. that was in the group. Yeah, I I, I did mention it once. It. I mentioned it once that people. Just, I didn't, like, you didn't really get much. I didn't to. really mention it. Like guys, look at this. I was just like, if you are in this, you're winning. That's kind of like what I said. Um, but wow. definitely have a look if anyone wants more information and let me know because they are I just added it to the watch list yeah. like right now yeah. I just added it um, <laughs> I'll, I'll talk about it more in the group going going forward because I'm in it every day but then actually but then actually this, that's, that's, that's actually quite a good stock to discuss in terms of where you might have missed the boat so something oh. like Novasite I was like at five pounds I, I said no I'm not going back in that's ridiculous um, I can't see getting back up to getting up to ten pounds mm. something but once it dipped below three pounds I was like okay maybe there's the scope at least for a 25 50 percent return yeah um, but with something like co-diagnostics is it one that you'd say oh yeah you've 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 probably missed the boat or um, but as you were saying it's quite it's still highly volatile so if it's swinging up to 28 um, um dollars a share then 
there might still be scope for some profit. Yes, I think the reason why I'm mentioning this, I'm mentioning this particularly for swing traders and day traders in the group because if you're right. buying, um, if you're buying and holding, you might have a heart attack with this one. Right. <laughs> if you know <laughs> that you're, not apply to me. yeah, if you're planning entry and exits in short spaces of time, then you're definitely yeah. able to make a lot of money on this stock. Um, yeah. Okay. You can lose the the it, is it, yeah, is it one that you can set limit orders on? Yeah, I hate where you can't. Set oh, no, 100%. Order the the limit orders most of the time you can set, and yeah. um, then market yeah. orders when the market's closed a bit more difficult, but yeah, you definitely can set yeah. limit orders. Yeah, no, I don't oh, nice. I'm adding that to the I'm adding that to my yes, shortlist. please. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I mean, so, some others that have been uh, just a shout out to some other stocks in terms of the health mm-hmm. sector for our coronavirus uh moderna and novavax are two others that have been um another one that was fruitful. mentioned was hemogenic Pop in bottles. <laughs> Pop in bottles. sorry what did you say right now about hemo- hemogenics h-e-m-o yes hemogenics yes yes hemogenics yes, that's, actually wins in oh i made so. money on hemo last week actually <laughs> yes you did <laughs> yes. yeah it was, and it was within the space of a couple of hours in, as well yeah, really hours, so yeah. i missed this one <laughs> no i'll tell you what i did with this one, one. I, I missed this funny thing is I missed the party. I missed the first party. And then um on the way back down, I um I put it on the target entry after I missed the party as uh on the on the watch list I put a target entry of seven. And at the time it was trading at eleven. So I yeah. thought no way is it ever gonna get to seven. Right. And then it got to seven and I was like, whoa, do I actually want to get into this? Mm. And I think an hour later of thinking it was at five. Point five, and I thought no, if it gets to at least seven, that's that's free money. That's like yeah. an easy 30 percent. So you know what? I'm going to do it. So um, I bought it at five point five before the end of the, the end of the day at eight, but I got it at, at seven point five. So um, yeah, easiest money I made last week, nice. and I was so it was happy. Good. It was good, and it was it was quite good to see that in real time as well. Like just in terms of how the group works, because yeah. you you're very good at posting your your trade steps. Mm, um, you do, yeah. and and um, you'd posted once you'd got in at about five and a half or whatever it was at the time. And literally, I'm not I'm not even joking. I'm not I'm not. It's not hyperbole. I'm not overemphasizing. A couple of hours later, this thing was at seven or eight. And wow. I was like, you know what? That, he literally that just happens a lot when you go down. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the right. timing is everything. Like the Aston Martin. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Like the Aston Martin. Oh, he Aston he Martin. happens a lot. Exactly. <laughs> Have you got some that tells you what to do? I do, <laughs> I do want to thank the group, actually, because they did give me gene drive. So... Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. They gave me Gene Drive yeah. as well. <laughs> Gene Drive is doing numbers. Yeah. Gene Drive is yet another testing one. Um, and I think someone posted about um, is it the government that has bought into them? Like, has asked them to do services for them? Yeah, is that testing the one for them. Working in I office? think. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 So um, yeah. So Gene Drive is another one that's doing. Absolute yes, it numbers. was. I, I forgot mean, about that- it. Yeah, how can you? Yeah. I made money it? on it and I forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's one that I I made I made a hundred percent on it. I cashed out my some of my original, and the rest is still in there currently at seventy percent. Wow. Um, I'm just I'm holding on to that no, one. For great. Um, just watching it play, and I mean, I just watch exactly just watching it play because if it's not if it's not capital that I'm going to be using straight away, then um and or it's um for these type of stocks that do have. The potential to rise especially in this climate mm. um same same play with novavax and moderna who are doing um who are trying to build vaccines so um joy mentioned gilead um at the top um so between someone had posted in the group um 10 virus making companies mm. um a few weeks back um i'd like like these are these are apparently the companies that are looking to make um, vaccines do some research and and see what is how see how you go and I, I remember I spent a weekend, uh, it, like, <laughs> well, I mean, fine, it's lockdown period, but just how exciting I am. It was Friday. No, no shame in it. Tell, <laughs> <us>. <laughs> it was Tell us. Tell us how you spend your weekends, Louis. <laughs> <laughs> There's no judgment in stock pickers. <laughs> it's better not be judgment. But it was Friday evening. I was watching CNBC closing bell. 
And um, they were discussing Gilead, and I was like, okay, better than East Enders. So, um, so Gilead made my list of what to research over the weekend, and then from the other ten that were on there, um, I see Novavax and Moderna. Moderna was also on closing bell on CNBC, mm-hmm. um, and some other random stocks. So, over the weekend, I looked into Gilead, Novavax, Moderna. And a company called IBO, so I B I O, um, as my like Corona vaccine oh, yeah. stock. And Gilead is obviously a yeah, well it's renowned, it, yeah. and it's yeah, it's 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 one of those. It's like it's a it's a name similar to like AstraZeneca, and like the pharmaceuticals. So I was like, okay, fine, yeah. they're stable yeah. enough. Uh, Moderna and Novavax, I liked the way they looked. I can't even remember what it was about them. Um, I think Moderna looked looked quite stable as well. And Novavax was a was a I like to say better price. It sounded like Novavax, so you thought, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna tell you what it is on, on Novavax. Novavax was because Gilead was like at seventy five dollars a share when I saw it. Moderna was about uh, I think thirty or forty, and Novavax was was more. It was a, at a quote unquote better price entry point for me, as in it was cheaper. Mm. So. <laughs> So I was like, okay, Novavax will make the list. And at the time, was it about um, fourteen, uh, no, thirteen or fourteen dollars a share? Um, and IBO was at like two dollars a share. So that was my risk taker. And um, I'll start off with IBO because we're—I don't know if you guys know, but I know certainly know where it's gone from there. It's in the doldrums, and I'm just—I'm just hoping that I make I, like I um, even out this cent- sometime this century. But what I liked about them was um, <laughs> this century. <laughs> no, genuinely, it's, I'm down it's in the like, long run. In the long run, but I am down. I'm down thirty-five percent at the moment on on IBO, but um. But what I did like, what was interesting about them was they're plant-based. They're they're focusing their technology on plant-based. And you know how the, the the world, the way the world is moving at the moment, everything is plant-based. Uh, mm. We're not going to discuss Beyond Meat right now, but the world <laughs> is definitely it's moving above me forward. now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the world is definitely. I think I, I, I've oh, used that one quite a lot. So <laughs> yeah. I've got no shame in recycling the old jokes. <laughs> Do it. Why not? They work. Oh, we didn't even talk about Horizon as well. Horizon Discovery. Sure oh, Horizon know. Discovery. Yep. I love this stock. <laughs> you made you made a <laughs> win in that as well, didn't you? Yeah. The thing is, um, I've invested in this one already and already made, I think, 37%. Wow. Mm. And since I've got out, it's, it's, it's dropped. That seems to happen a lot sometimes as well. Yeah. Um, so it's dropped. So I'm building my position again because I do feel this is a stock for the long run. Please. And what we're seeing in Nervous Day and what we're seeing in um, Avacta and React Group, I'm expecting to see it in Horizon Discovery as well because they're, ge- they're gene editing company. Mm-hmm. And this is the power of the group. So this is how Horizon Discovery came about. Um, one of the doctors in the group mentioned gene editing in his, um, in his field of work and how it's becoming a big thing. And he said, you know what? That one of the companies at the forefront of that is Bluebird, and Bluebird is another stock that I've invested in. Mm. Um, so then I said, okay, is where's the is there a UK company that can match the energy of Bluebird? So I started looking around, and I literally couldn't find one. Then I think like I, I put it on a group, and a, um, a week later or two weeks later, someone actually came up with Horizon Discovery as gene editing in the UK, a UK company. So I looked at it, and that's what. Um, made me get involved in the first place because I like the price um, and right now they're going for a place in which is what is causing the price to be so low because it's touched that 100, that psychological 100 level um, so I actually added to my position to build um, but yeah I've got a lot of big dreams and big plans for this <laughs> one <laughs> yeah. I've put my reputation on the line for this one <laughs> Horizon is one I'm still I'm still watching. I haven't dipped my toe yeah. in yet. I'm expecting um, them to um sorry to cut you out. I'm expecting them to just announce that the placing has been successful and that to just <laughs> put a lot of momentum into the stock price and to just send it to the moon to two hundred. But um yeah, yeah we'll see. 
But I mean, it, it's it it's hit and miss. So, uh, like, just to to finish off that tandem, um, IBO was was a miss, but Novavax and Moderna have been a uh, have been faithful to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to put it to, to put we it th- lightly, we thank the but, Lord. Uh, we thank the Lord because um, they're both um, they're both at least one hundred percent. Novavax is at two hundred percent return for me at the moment. So, uh, yeah, it's. It's uh, lend me a fiver. <laughs> lend me a fiver, Lorraine. <laughs> can you no, lend me a fiver? Like, <laughs> of course, any day, then. It's the least I can do for the group, right? <laughs> the least, just a little I mean, fiver. That is, that is the like, that is the, the power of the group, though, because I yeah, mean, um, thing. had had someone not posted about 10 vaccines for um, for corona, um. I mean, maybe I would have gotten there in the end, but the time I did the research and the time I got into the market for those four stocks, uh, maybe not for IBO, but for Gilead, certainly, uh, Novavax and Moderna, um, paid off. Great. Wonderful. Are we going to talk about a vector and react? Did anyone get those? I, I'm I'm in those, but I'm, I'm a holding I'm holding fire. They're not they're not firing on all cylinders for me yet. But they, they haven't made five hundred percent. Okay, they haven't I hear made five hundred percent exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean, the fact is only sitting around twenty five percent. Five hundred percent. Um, great. Should we talk about working from home stocks now? So yeah. some of the ones that have done quite well this year are DocuSign. DocuSign's up 63%. Um, Microsoft and Google have been had modest returns. They're still positive. Okta is a cloud company. They're up 57%. Um, Dropbox, Upwork, and then, as I mentioned earlier, Citrix, Zoom, and Slack. So have any of you got into any working from home stocks? Besides Nvidia, that's the quarantine <laughs> stock. <laughs> Which, yeah, you're right. That's, actually, yeah. No, you're Basically, some people work from home and play games. That's what he's okay. saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Strange enough, but yeah, I um. Go on, sorry. I, I someone flagged DocuSign yeah. in the group yeah. when it was at a hundred, mm. and um. This is, this is the beauty of it. So someone that's a lawyer or someone that's an entrepreneur that actually uses a product can actually just mention the fact that they're using the product mm. more and more contracts are being signed yeah. electronically. And on the back of that, I think that was actually the discussion that led to us to find DocuSign, yeah. right? And, I, yeah. and then we added it to the watch list. And at the time, it was 100. Mm. And lo and behold, since then, I think it's gone up to about you know, one, two, five, one, two, six it's gone dollars. Up at least, I mean, I've, I yeah, yeah, but twenty five percent. I mean, I had DocuSign in my portfolio. I had it since January, way before I joined um, the Stock Picks Association, and um, I had it on the premise that what's it called that um, Adobe might obtain, you know, they might acquire Do- DocuSign. So I had it in about seventy four oh, dollars, and I thought, you know, when you hear accusations, of course your ear is gonna pop. Like, hey, you could, you know, ten x your money. Who knows? So I've, I've always had it. Yeah, I think that could still happen. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Because that's the only little slight, dis, you know, dis, distinct distinguishing between them, them and Adobe. So, I mean, I had it about 70 odd dollars. And, you know, of course. I've, yeah, I, put, I think I put it on the watch list at yeah. a target entry of 80 when it was trading at 100. Because I, sometimes around numbers like 100, you get this kind of volatility. Mm, of course, yes. Before, yeah. it then dis, before it then decides what it wants to do next. Yeah. And I was just hoping that I'll just get like a little dip because I was so bullish this stock when I heard about it. Mm. Um, that because it reminded me of what happened with Wix. Mm-hmm. So Wix.com is how I literally built yeah. the website mm. myself for stock yeah. pickers. And I did it because um, on another project where um, uh, my family were building a school in, in, in Nigeria, we, we actually used Wix to design the website. So I thought, okay, Wix, that's what I know. Let me try and design the website for stock pickers as well. Mm. Now, I didn't actually think, oh, what if a lot of people like myself, or a lot of entrepreneurs actually design their own website now because it's quite easy to, to do. do. Yeah. And I looked at this and they reported their earnings yeah. on Friday, right? And between, fri- between Friday and maybe four years ago when we first started building that website, the stock price has gone six times, six yeah. times up. Yeah. 
And uh, it's a similar thing. That's why I said with DocuSign, I went back and I looked at the price um, appreciation and it's just been ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not involved. <laughs> I'm not involved yet. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and I'm a bit worried that I'm not going to get a chance to get involved. <laughs> but, but we move. But we move, as we say. Yeah, but we move. I mean, yeah. Wix, you're right. Has, has Wix's return in the last week has been around 30%. And they're up sixty yeah. percent on wow. the year. Yeah. They've had an incredible year. Same with DocuSign and Okta. Yeah. So I feel the same as you does with this section. Like with Zoom, the price kept rising, rising, rising. Now it's up one hundred and fifty percent. I just I don't know um, where yeah. to go. We don't buy highs, exactly. do we? We don't I'm buy record highs. We don't buy record highs. <laughs> no. We only yeah. buy dips. <laughs> but, well, I mean, like you know, when I when I joined when I joined. Um, you know, stock, stock Pickers Association, my, I had a different mentality. You know, I don't really care about buying at whatever price. Once I've done my research, because, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I want to just lock it away, throw away the keys for another 30, 40, 50 years. I mean, I think I made a comment saying, you know, I'm never going to sell this. And someone actually laughed. And I thought, that's quite funny. But that is that's how I used to feel about Tolo Oil. <laughs> 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 that is how I, I used to feel. Really really <laughs> of course, I started cashing in recently, and and I've actually seen my portfolio. You know, I mean, it's it's actually almost doubling already. And I'm thinking, maybe you need to start selling. You know, this Warren Buffett philosophy of 1960s, 70s probably wouldn't really sell in 2020. No. I mean, it's still good, but definitely not with crypto deep. as well. That's what I learned that mistake no. from crypto. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to be careful. And I mean, it depends. It does depend. I mean, if you are a long term investor, if you're a value investor and you're you're more suited to long term holding, then even if it's getting to that point where you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be holding anymore, then at, at the very least, then you can just sell out of your original position, like take out your mm-hmm. original capital, and then the yeah, but just even Warren there. Buffett even trims his portfolio as well. That's what you got to think about because well, even though he's portfolio says, trimming sell, is he important. Trims. <laughs> so we, we all get it wrong sometimes and just you know you have to understand your philosophy and you have to reveal or revise it accordingly yeah very true. exactly evolution of your process is so yeah. important updating your process with new information and things you learn yeah. is so important um that's actually one of the biggest things i've learned from the group like i said before my, my watch list was only 20 names yeah. and I, I was only invested in six mm. Now my watch list is 200 names and I'm actually finding that some of the names on the watch list are actually, I, I rank them higher than the 20 that are on my watch list. Mm. Um, so one of the things that's actually changed about my investment style is I, I actually believe I've become a little bit more active than I used to be, right? Mm. Um, yeah. So I'd only have six names and I'll manage each position carefully Whereas now, um, I feel like I'm doing a, f- I'm I'm leveraging the profits by doing a bit more yeah. in trading. So even though I was unhappy that I missed out on Novasir and React, and I actually wrote on a group, five hundred pound is going into React, which is a Corona disinfectant service, and yeah. five hundred pound is going into a Vector, but I didn't execute because I got sidetracked. Uh, there was this other name that had a similar it had a similar ticker to your vector. And I looked at the price and it just looked so juicy. <laughs> it looked so juicy. So I went, I went, actually, I think I put like a grand in that. And lo and behold, the next day, it went from trading at 1.5 to trading at 4. Wow. Unopened, it opened at 4.5. Yeah. But I was getting excited thinking, whoa, look at me. <laughs> by the end of the day, <laughs> by the end of the day, it closed at a loss. Because yeah. what happened is I actually, I actually took out at 18%, but the actual share price closed down. So what actually happened is people mistook the ticker for a vector. That's what I mm. believe happened. Yeah. Yeah. I think the and same, then they realized... The happened to Zoom initially. Zoom, yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. people are buying the wrong Zoom. <laughs> they pushed that Zoom up like four thousand I mean, percent. It was crazy. Yeah. yeah, they did. And I mean, then they had to zoom up. In terms of like um, 
in terms of being more active now, do you, because I'm certainly more active than I have been in the recent past. Do you think that is because of us all trying to trade on Corona stocks? So whether it's healthcare or work from home or consumer. I used to think Barclays was shape, oh safe God. as houses. I thought that's a stock that I could comfortably so not leave necessarily Corona, a decent amount in, right? Barclays and just leave it. Barclays for five, is pushing people's years. headlines back, you know. That's that stock. <laughs> it's called a lot of friends. Well, a few of my friends, you know, I say stay away from the bank. Stay away from the bank. Stay away from the banks. <laughs> like, mm-mm. Yeah. I, yeah, I, and it's funny because someone actually, um, Carl, Carl, Carl actually tipped on the group that look, you know what? Uh, so Carl used to work here at, at Goldman. Mm. Um, he is a VP there in, in, in research, and he actually came out and said, look, you know what, banks. He actually wrote a proper essay about why convincing us why we should Thank take you. our money out of banks. <laughs> at the time, it was Long Barclays at a hundred and sixty, and I think other people had bought at hundred and forty. I actually sold it. Sorry, yeah, I actually sold it at one seven five. After after Carl wrote his message, I said, you know what, okay, I'm going to work my way out of this. And I waited like I think a week, two weeks for the price to give me a little decent profit. And uh, yeah, I just took it out. I think I made seventy pound, seventy pound profit. I had a punchy position on, but it was only up like five percent or something. Mm-hmm. And I just felt, you know what, I've been in this position for nearly a year and a half. And, and it's not hit. It's not hit that two hundred <laughs> that I wanted it to hit. So you know what, exactly. Brexit is coming. I don't know what's going to happen. Let me just take this out and free up some decent capital that I can invest mm-hmm. in lots of different things. And yeah, since then the price has just literally gone below hundred. I can't be. I yeah. can't believe my eyes. You are now listening to the Hot Stocks podcast. So yeah. basically, amongst the three of us, not we haven't really got much exposure to the most successful working from home stocks. Basically, <laughs> besides my long, no. um, well, long duck. Or something. You're right. Hold on, yeah. is is a work from home? Well, no, it's not technically a work from home stock, is it? I was going to say Peloton. Yeah, exactly. I mean, can, Peloton, is, but is that, yeah, that consumer? We can, yeah. we can move on that's to that one now. Bit. I think we we're all more in the quarantine stocks. So that's like Netflix, Nvidia, Peloton. You are now listening to the Hot Stocks podcast. Lorraine can't wait for us to move on to the next bit. Yeah, and I know Bank no. as well has had good success in this section. So yeah, this is like um, self quarantine stocks. So your Netflix, Activision, Nvidia, Peloton, etc. So, of course, absolutely. I I mean, I've I've been in Netflix for about a year or so. Um, at some point, I think that was when I, you know, I changed my philosophy and I thought, OK, at this point in time, you know, I want to start getting into um, dividend stocks. But he doesn't pay dividend, of course. And I thought, OK, Netflix, I didn't really do much research when I got into I got into an all time high. And I had a plan of holding to what, you know, like I said, forever, basically, eternity. And at some point, it really did. Um, I think not 20, before the 23rd of March. It actually dipped lower than the price, lower than the three-year price before. So um, I think I got into Netflix about three, I think it was about three hundred dollars, and at some point it dipped a bit lower than that. But I thought, you know what, I'm going to maintain my composure, and I just bought a lot more. But even though I looked at all the all mm. all the the blogs and everything, and everyone's just going on about how Disney's going to kick it out and Apple and everyone, I'm thinking, have I made the wrong choice? But anyway, you know, I just thought. <laughs> I'm just going to buy in the deep. I've got confidence in these. But, you know, they're not making any money. The same thing as, um, same, same as Tesla, but it doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, present exactly. day now, my, my Netflix is giving me uh, 80%, you know, for, for such nice. a price. Wow. And then NVIDIA, I, I, go, I go into NVIDIA about, uh, what, what price is that going to NVIDIA? I think I go into NVIDIA about more than a year ago. And in the in the in the, in the low low um, two hundreds, I would say, or was it no in the low hundreds actually? And um, there was a time, I, you know, I, I'm I got I got I got my wage, and you know, I thought, you know what, it doesn't harm. Let me just get another fourteen more. I got fourteen more units, and uh, yeah. So Nvidia, I was it a few days ago. I thought, you know what, let me just post some of my wins, or one of my wins anyway. 
the Stock Pickers Association, and I was able to post a hundred percent profit in Nvidia, even Amazing. though I got more, way more than hundred. Come on, he got way more. Than how much? Percent. <laughs> <laughs> and someone said, "Oh, you trading with house prices right now?" I'm like, "Well, you know, you might as well just win." <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, can can I just go back? Sorry, Bengal, because you said something that was really important. Yeah. So with Netflix, you said you made eighty percent return, right? I've got eighty percent return on Netflix, and right you now. bought yeah. it at some point this year in March. Is that it? Eighty yeah. percent. Okay. I got <laughs> I got eighty percent returns in Netflix. Uh, you know, I just thought to be honest, I'm gonna maintain my composure. And you, I got Netflix and, in the two yeah go in sorry, March, right? Uh, it yes, I, I I bought the dip in March. Oh, yeah. Yes, and in March it actually dipped to the three year low, so it dipped around three hundred. Oh. That was yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the yeah. reason I'm bringing this up as well is because it goes back to what we were talking about earlier in terms of buying dips. So someone that yeah. bought Netflix at the beginning of the year would have only earned 36% this time. So sometimes when you buy and hold, you miss out on the advantages. So you do. Yeah. You do. Yeah. You bought yeah. So if you time. had bought in March, you probably would have made about the same as I have, you know, considering I've been in, you know, close to two years now. So, yeah. And uh, and that's the thing. And it wasn't yeah. paying me dividend. And uh, I mean, why did I actually trim my NVIDIA? Because, you know, of course, it wasn't because I wanted to show off. But I've got, you know, I had about £4,000 in NVIDIA. And I was only making about £4 in dividend every quarter. Is that really worth my wife? Mm. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know. You can't even <laughs> lend me a fiver with your dividend. <laughs> So yeah, uh, so in terms of the you know the the what the quarantine stocks, Nvidia and Netflix have actually been very good for mm-hmm. me. But to me. And we love to see it. A lot of these uh, a lot of these big name stocks as well. Like the dip in March was a the twenty third of March. Yeah, and I keep had... thinking, are we ever gonna hit the bottom? I mean, between the seventeenth, between the seventeenth to the twenty third of March, a lot of stock, like just that little yeah. window. If you bought yeah. anything, I mean, it's not one of the it's not one of the Corona stocks. So it's slightly I'm off topic, but oh yeah, the one that dipped within that Literally, time, and it's back. It's back up at its yeah, it is. Um, That's one of my friends. Dip rate and it's it's it's, it's yeah. amazing. No, it's um, a good point. Yeah. Actually, I bought Boohoo last year because I used to cover consumer stocks um for work. Mm. And 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 what mm. you said, Bengo, is very true. Someone that bought in the dip would have probably earned the same as me that's been holding it for yeah. a year. So it's mm-hmm. timing, yeah. timing is everything, and it's worth considering if we think that if there's a second wave that comes with the virus or any other news comes out, if we are to see yeah. another crash, which we should expect to some degree, uh, what mm-hmm. opportunities would we like to get hold of at that time? So, yeah. what about Activision? Yeah, I guess. Um, Activision. Yeah, I know, we're, know we're both invested in Activision. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 Activision actually came from the group. Activision is one I actually looked into uh, all this while, and I mean, I thought, okay, you know, you know, I, I work with kids sometimes, my spare time, my charity, and they all talk about what's what's that game all again? Of Duty Fortnite. or Fortnite? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I thought, <laughs> okay, I, I play Call of Joy, Duty. Play my little brother plays Fortnite. Yeah, I mean, all kids play for. Okay, you've never oh, tried. You've never tried it. <laughs> I have because I've seen him play yeah. it. It's not for me. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's I've, not I've for tried me. Fortnite, it's... and it's it's not. It didn't grab my the graphics attention. are too no, Teletubby-ish for me. Like, <laughs> well, speaking of you know, speaking 100. of the same principle. So if you have bought Activision in 2017 and if you buy in 2019 March, you, you know, you probably would just be on the same same boat. Really, you wouldn't have made nothing. So, you know, and if you bought Activision now in 2020, you probably would make more money than someone who's holding since 2017. Mm. So, of course, I mean, they always say, you know, time in the market beats timing the market. But sometimes... Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> timing is gone. Come on, say that again. Pardon? Pardon? But, this is one of Warren Buffett's philosophy, which didn't really make me, make me, didn't yeah. really want to make me. You are Warren Buffett. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. It's true. It's but, true. Uh, sometimes it's, it's time, time in the market. That's first the timing, but sometimes timing, timing beats oh, time in the market. I agree. Yeah, it's about the decision making is when to know when to switch yeah. between the two. Yes. 
right? Rather than just being stuck in a philosophy because Warren Buffett (laughs) said so. Exactly. I wish I could tell you how many books I bought about this oracle just telling me what to do. (laughs) Thank you. Um, you know, another one so i mean I, i've got to say thank thank you know thanks for creating this topic of association. i actually bought activision yeah. at 40 i bought activision at 40 after yeah. um someone tipped it in the group and i was in the in that position for yeah. such a long time and then when it got to 60 i just thought it didn't have no. much steam um so i got out at 60 and i was happy because it then dipped to like 57 58 and stayed there for ages and it's literally crept up from that 60 level maybe a year maybe eight months later to um yeah 75 yeah. 75 which yeah. is another 25 yeah. percent um i'm a big call of duty player anyway so they've always been one of my faves long term and i think um if i look into the future we've i think we've discussed it before a lot of companies are probably going to continue this working from home thing for a few years and even in the long term as well so some of these stocks um may have long-term momentum um i mean that's why i thought nvidia is here to stay you yeah. know, looking at schools thinking about virtual classrooms agencies coordinating critical errors from all over the places supporting financial professionals working with data multiple screens scientists doing research i mean it actually forms the bedrock yeah. of literally what everyone does and i thought you know one of one yeah. of the principles i've always had is instead of buying a particular product why not buy the platform that feeds into this product that's the only way you can win yeah. but there's only so many plat- platforms you can buy really mm-hmm. and um which is why you know i thought nvidia has been a really good winner from even same as amd i don't know if anyone yes AMD. i've been trading that one i had amd at ten dollars and amd is trading at 50 something yeah. now. i mean i trimmed that portfolio just to, so i could take take an opportunity of this covid which can uh, sound like a paradox not a really good thing to say you know but at the same time uh, cash is king oh, absolutely sometimes <laughs> it gives you um so it, it gives you me. options so yeah yeah um sorry i missed out on this one guys and i know a lot of you benefited from it um because of my hate for cardio i was like why would people buy an exercise bike and it seems to have been great for all of you so how did peloton go oh peloton peloton is is (laughs) really because okay so I'm 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 part of the cult. I'm I'm I've been indoctrinated. I'm never leaving. <laughs> um, I bought a Peloton in December. So out oh, you of got that, the bike. I tried the okay. product. I got the bike. <laughs> and you see, the thing is, I like to try a product. It doesn't always work. So I tried Beyond Meat. I tried their product. I tried their sausages, and I was like, "This is disgusting." I'm not putting my money in the company. Look how that has turned out. Um, so, so it's not always right, but when you get it right, it's it's a good feeling then. Because I bought Peloton in, I bought the bike, and then I was like, "Okay, cool. I'm actually gonna buy into this because I actually believe in the company." Mm. Um, so let's go. Uh, I bought it at about thirty dollars ish, not thirty two ish dollars a share, and I was like, I'm in it for the long term anyway, so it doesn't really matter what it's trading at. And once it dipped again, once it dipped into the twenties, I was like, yeah, let's go in again. You might as well <laughs> take advantage. Uh, <laughs> and um, their earnings report, obviously, they're one of those consumer stay at home stocks. We can't do anything else, so let's 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 buy. We can't go to gyms. Um, so let's buy bikes and do home workouts instead. And it's and just to plug them a bit, it's not it's more than the bike because they have all this like running outdoors and strength and meditation and yoga. So it, it, it caters for more than just the let's spin yeah. at home. And after their earnings, what last week, a uh, couple of weeks ago, they've just skyrocketed from there. So um I, I was always going to be biased with Peloton, but I have more reasons yeah, to be biased. Yeah, I mean, I've always thought, is it going to be a potential disruptor? And I, you know, I, I debated it because yes. I thought, oh, it's something for the rich folks, really. So, <laughs> that's why I didn't really get into it at all. Yeah. For the wealthy. <laughs> well, you've got to keep an open mind. It's not, though. It's not. Some people, I mean, some people spend 60 to 100 pounds on a gym membership every month. You might as well do that. Okay, if you're an avid spinner, I think it works mm. out because I love to spin and I hate it. It's either A, classes weren't on at the time I'd be able to do them. I'd, I have to get a workout in at 5, 6 a.m. Mm. latest um, or late in the evening. So it's either A, I'm going to have to 
get ready and go to the gym, get in my car and drive to the gym so I can take a spin class later than I would mm. like to, um, or not spin or get it in my house and literally walk downstairs and jump on the bike. So um, yeah, it it it, it so, takes a lot. Of, it takes a lot of boxes, and, and now that it's reflected, what what does this mean for the f- the f- yeah. gym membership for people that bought this bike? Basically, what do we think is going to happen? Are you going to return back to the gym when things go back, or? Uh, probably I think... not. I wasn't going that often before, anyway. So they're just taking the money. <laughs> I for think no Peloton's actually been one to watch out for. I mean, last year it was one of the number one. It was, I think, top it's it's top uh, five, top five uh, Christmas lists around the country and the worldwide, really. So it's always been a potential disruptor. And I think COVID-19 just did bring it out the fore. Oh, and, exacerbated and, and, it. Absolutely. Yeah. And considering what you said, you know, um, it's got yoga, it's got meditation. You know, thinking about Calm, for example, which is just an app, is actually one of the biggest mm, disruptors yeah. of the market. So, and Peloton's actually Very taking true. a bite into those, you know, in, into that space as well. Do they have a subscription oh, yeah, they model? Do. You pay thirty nine dollars uh, monthly. Yeah. I don't know how much you pay in pounds, but yeah. Okay. In, you pay thirty nine pounds. pounds. There so you go. Not so a about good the same thing. Right yeah. there, and but... so you actually, I don't know. I think you probably got to be able, be able to, you know, look at the rankings and compare yourself around the world and all that. Yeah. So th- there's a lot more to it. Exactly. Has it got a bench press on it? <laughs> Has it got a bench? <laughs> I feel like I'm. I'm a... Does it come with dumbbells? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but like. And they do they do have they've tried to make a real community they out do. of it and they've recently introduced some um, hashtags yeah. um so it's i think it's it's going to be a major I think major it's disruptor and corona has has exacerbated it because it's not the first it's not the first spin no, bike so. um maker and i mean to be honest i bought a spin bike before i bought the peloton to make sure i was actually going to use it because i wasn't about to shell out all that money on something i wasn't going to use so i bought a couple hundred spin bike first to make sure i was going to use it once i was using that car religiously i was like okay fine a peloton would be worth it um so where's the spin bike <laughs> oh i sent it back it stopped working out. i love it i stopped working about eight months and i was ready to buy my peloton by then anyway so i was like you know what it's not okay. working anymore can you come take it can you come pick it up and they did so happy yeah, it seems like it, it seems like an interesting talk. great um Maybe we no, should... because i was reading this week as well like you know soros the soros fund um they they bought another 2.5 million shares in peloton um it's one of the top holdings yeah. oh wow so, sorry and this what week, yeah, this was? week, how, how they bought two, an, an extra two and a half million shares in Peloton, Soros Fund. Soros, you know George Soros? Soros. Fund. So his fund, Soros. Soros. Oh, yeah, Soros. his fund oh, management Soros. firm, they bought two and a half. They had 0.28 before and they bought an extra 2.5 million this year, oh, this wow. week. That's when you know that a lot of their employees are actually using one and they're thinking, well... If 80% of our employees are using this product, mm, then absolutely. it must be one for the future. Yeah. Well, I mean, these guys di- dictate the shape of the future anyway, don't they? So. Yeah. You are now listening to the Hot Stocks podcast. Maybe we should move on to discussing, to round up, just what your favourite stock is right now on the watch list. Or in general? Um, okay, I mean, I'll tell you this. Um, I bought into Hanon Infrastructures and um, I only got, got it about a few months ago. Um, H-A-S-I, that's the ticker. And uh, so they're making conscious decisions. Why did I do it? They make conscious decisions to grow the earning faster than dividend. They've got this philosophy, which has been in place for quite some time. They've got fantastic management. And even, you know, I mean, I've, like I said, I've always been a purist, you know, kind of kind of like a value investor. And when I looked into this also, um, most of the most, most of the stocks, actually, they did cut the dividend. But these guys, they did raise their dividend, not just to make a statement, but at the same time, just to let you understand that, you know, they're sticking by what they're doing. They beat the market by 450 percent in the past five years. They're reducing the debt gradually. So there's not a lot of them around. Uh, you know, who's promising billions of funds to reduce carbon exposure, because that's literally what they do. That's the market. They are green. They're into the green economy. You know, I'm investing for the future. Okay. So that's one for me. And um, 
I didn't. I bought it after the dip, not even the dip at all, and it's given me forty eight percent already. Nice. Uh, and how long? Yeah. Nice. Oh wow! <laughs> Thank you for the heads up. <laughs> <laughs> Just been wax- waxing lyrically about it, so I'll keep it super short. Um, Peloton. I think it's it's enjoying a Corona wave or probably dip. Um, once life starts getting back to normal, but I'm holding it for the long term, so that's okay with me. Oh, did I mention my dividend as well? From, <laughs> <laughs> from <laughs> what is their dividend like? About ten percent or something like that. And Ooh. yeah, so it's a promising one. I'll tell wow. you that for free. <laughs> it's a promising one for the future. <laughs> I just added it to my short list. <laughs> my favourite stock is Fastly. Um, they're an edge. Yeah, they're my favourite stock. Fastly. They're an edge computing company. Um, I think it's Fast. Let me just double check. Yeah, F no F S L Y F S L Y is the ticker. So, okay. um, yeah, they're an edge con- edge computing company. So they just work on like um improving broadband speeds etc so I came across them earlier this year and I was quite blessed in that I invested I finally pulled the trigger about two weeks ago and their earnings came out and they absolutely crushed it so they went up 50 percent in about two days and then um, again apologies um but yeah, and they're sitting at that new level now. So they're, they're definitely my favourite. I've invested it in, in quite a few different ways. Um, SIP and my PA as well. So I'm holding them for the long term. Class computing. Yeah. Well done. Wonderful. It's glad to know that people are, <laughs> people are making money outside the group. <laughs> and, not, and not sharing <laughs> to get to their watch list. <laughs> <laughs> Even God is I watching you. Still, I mean, I, okay, I mean, I probably did buy the buy the deep again. I've I've had a uh, hand on infrastructure for about four months, and I just added a bit more to my portfolio. That's it, really. So, no, that's but, good. That's good. Yeah. I I like to see people making profits, <laughs> but do you know what I like more? Come on, dude. Yep. The heads up. <laughs> I, I think I'm probably going to share my, my portfolio. With yeah, you. I'll start sharing more. Yeah, it's good. It's healthy. It's healthy. It's just yeah. uh, it's just healthy for the culture, the 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 community, and you know, just getting that watch you know, list to have more more quality. Um, that, you know, I don't write short lengths. notes. I tend to write lengthy pieces. So I tend to. Yeah. But it's good because everyone that's 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 great as well because you get a bit of both. You get a bit of the people who um go into more detail and the people yeah, that so just tell you one little I'm, idea, I'm right? And it's how people <laughs> process the info. No, no, no. Everyone the worst sure. they can do is ignore it, right? But the ones mm-hmm. like myself, I'll skim through it. Yeah. Um my favorite stock is a stock that I don't actually own. I've got two favorite stocks. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to tell you what my favorite stock is, but I don't own it. And then I'm going to tell you what my next favorite stock is and talk you through that because I actually do own it. So my favorite stock is mm-hmm. Stocks, mm-hmm. Shopify. Mm. <laughs> um, a good one. Shopify. And I missed the boat. Missed the I missed boat. the ship. Yep. I missed everything with that one. <laughs> it IPO'd and literally has just been spiking. And then you know what I did? That's even worse is uh, I missed the boat again. So the market gave me a second time to get in. At, um, I think about 348 like two weeks or so ago and it's since doubled but we move Let, let's let's ignore that one let's not I, I actually wanted to take <laughs> off the watch list so I don't need to see it when I'm scrolling down but my favorite stock right now is um oh, yeah. Alio Gold now I like this stock because it was a beautiful play I felt like um I've, I've been in already so I've actually bought this stock and made 40% profit twice. But this time around, Corona sent the price down to 0.57. Wow. And previously, when I was making profit, it was like 90 to 112 and then 85 to 120. But this time around, market sent the price down to... Bear in mind, the pandemic was negative, was bad, right? Usually, you'd expect gold prices to start surging. 
but gold actually followed the um, market down. And then I yeah. there was a point when gold started rallying, but the stock was still lost in stock world. So when I buy gold, I think every gold portfolio yeah. should have a form of gold yeah. in it at some yeah. point. Now, I don't just like to buy the ETF, the pure ETF. Sure. I like to look for a bit of leverage by, by, by buying a stock with gold exposure. So Elio Gold is a mining stock in Canada. And sometimes the stock follows the stock story and sometimes the stock follows the mm. commodity mm. story, the gold story. Now, there was an opportunity here because gold started rallying, but Alio Gold didn't move for like days and days and days. And I couldn't understand it. I think it even might have gone a bit lower. So on the way back up, when it was at 65, bear in mind, for me, anything less than 100 was cheap. I just got into it. I got into it and I just held it. And it slowly creeped all the way up to like 120. So I'm, I'm looking at 82% return at the moment. And then in that time, they merged with um, another company called Argonaut Gold. So basically, now the price is tracking mm-hmm. Argonaut Gold. So my view on whether to liquidate before the completion of the takeover is actually being driven by whether or not I think Argonaut Gold can mm-hmm. get to two or higher. And I've looked at the chart for Argonaut Gold now, and it actually does look pretty decent, even below the price of two in the long run. Interesting. Um, but I do feel I might take profit if I start seeing more than 100%. I don't have the energy to be holding <laughs> for like 200 or 300. For me, like once I see the, once I see nominally yeah, money that I'm happy with, yeah. I take my profits and it's yeah. on to the next one. I'm a bit one. different to you though, Debs. I use um, leverage ETS for gold. Um, only because, like you say, a lot of the mining okay. companies have an idiosyncratic risk associated with them. So, like you say, sometimes the earnings will be related to gold and sometimes they're related to um, to other factors. Yeah, that's the reason why if I just want like a safe yeah. gold um, asset, I'll use leveraged um, ETF gold. Hmm. How do you find your leveraged ETFs when... Hmm. One, one, one thing I've realised with these leveraged ETFs, when the price is going up, it's great, but it's quite hard to recover from from losses on the on the leverage ETFs. You kind of need to really average and then still be patient for quite some time. I learned that with loyal. <laughs> I was able to, to still make money, but I noticed that there's something in the way they're constructed that actually makes it difficult to recover from a losing position, especially if it's like a big losing position, like 50%. You know, it's, it becomes quite difficult. Now, the only times I actually invest in, because you're right what you say about the idiosyncratic risks, the only time I actually invest in gold stocks is when I feel the price is extremely low from a stock perspective, but also the price of gold is extremely low. And that doesn't happen often. It doesn't happen happen often. Um, but when it does, I find that, your your risk to the downside is is fairly limited, and um, it seems to be working with this particular stock. Um, but yeah, this stock will cease to exist soon because it's going to just become Argonaut Gold. So I'm a little mm. bit. We should have like a little um, service <laughs> of songs. <laughs> okay. Thank you all for tuning in, and listening to this episode of Hot Stocks. I hope you've all thoroughly enjoyed it. Please follow us on Instagram at Stock Pickers Academy. And also, if you hit the link in the podcast description, you can join our mailing list for some more top tips. You can also join our Telegram group, which has over 400 members, a community where you can ask questions, share ideas, and also you can book one to one sessions with myself if you're looking to actually learn the basics and you're a complete beginner. And I'll guide you through.